everybody welcome back we have a absolute special guest tonight miss lily ryan everybody that knows me knows this is my baby girl this is my princess uh she's she's my she's my everything it's my baby girl she's been dying to have an appearance on here with the material we usually put out um maybe not a good idea sometimes but um with this one right here absolutely a good idea what today's show is going to be is childhood movies uh movies from your childhood that had an impact on you or maybe one you just watched over and over and just couldn't get enough of it um and to this day uh, the ones that I watch then, I still, anytime I catch them, I watch them from start to finish. I same. believe you guys are the same. Or, or anytime they come out on like DVD or Blu-ray when it comes out in new format, that's one of the first things you buy when you, you get that new format. And and let's be honest, a lot of those is what, why we're here today. They've created you know what we're into today, the, the love and the passion for what we do today. But with that being said, we're not going to waste a lot of time. Young Lily Ryan, we're all going to go give three of our top our top three from our childhood and um and, and tell a little bit about each movie but we're going to start off with lily ryan lily ryan what is your three movies i know what your number one is tell me. masterminds lily you're going to tell me what he says no no, <laughs> you know no. she loves that galifianakis anything he does she's in um i let her watch the edited versions of uh the hangover you know the ones on tbs mm -hmm. but <laughs> she loves anything he does masterminds is definitely one of her favorites what's another one Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I can get by. That's a good one. That's another one. That's that's basically from your childhood years, but she just that picked it up. Lucky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she can actually do the entire Napoleon Dynamite dance from start to finish too. And uh, what's another one, Lily? Uh, dodgeball. Dodgeball. So we're looking at masterminds. That is my childhood brother. Dodgeball. <laughs> dodgeball. dodgeball. And Napoleon Dynamite. Out of those three, which one do you think is your favorite? Um, Masterminds. Masterminds? Please say it. Pick it up. No. Say it, Lily. No. Pick it up. Drop it off. Repeat. No. <laughs> you not going to say it? Pick it up. I can't. Drop it off. Repeat. Pick it up. Drop it off. Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you like his glorious. costumes in that movie? Which one of your costumes is your favorite? I don't know. When he had the Mexican outfit on? And the big the big wild Mexican outfit? Yeah. You like that one? Or do you like when he looked like a like a lion, like a like a kitty cat going into the airport? You remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Lily, is there any other movies you wanna talk about? That you really like? I know one. What? I know a couple. Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. That's one of your favorites. That is my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see a trend here. Uh, her daddy's helped mold her. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You got anything else you want to tell everybody? It is a good thing. It is a good thing. You got anything else you want to tell everybody? No. Do you want to sit in for a little while while we do something? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Lily Ryan, you got three... Three very, very tough movies to beat. I, I think I'm gonna go, we're gonna go with kind of a format piece. Grew up in the 90s, rallying out in the 80s. Um, I'll probably just lead us off since we're back here behind the uh, <clears throat> behind the, 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 the bar with each other. Uh, one movie that really stuck out to me in my childhood that I watched over and over again and, and could never get enough of it was Back to the Future. Um, that movie. Uh, if I would have known I would have wore that. <laughs> yes. Uh, that movie, man, like it was. Uh, it's one of those movies like um, no matter what mood you're in, uh, no matter what kind of day you're having, as soon as you watch that movie, it, it just captures you, man. It takes you away to that place and it puts you in a good mood. It does. It puts you in. It's a, that's what if you if you Google like fun loving movie or fun you know inspiring movie that makes you feel good. It's a feel good. I mean that movie's to me it's fantastic, dude. Uh, Michael J. Fox, phenomenal. Uh, Christopher Lloyd, phenomenal. Um, I can't remember Biff's name, but. You always got to have, yeah, yeah, Biff yeah. Tannum, uh, which, by the way, the Goop, uh, what was the movie, uh, uh, the Google movie with Vince Vaughn and, oh, and I uh, love that remember movie. when they in the bar saying, you know, my bad, Biff Tannum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you knocked that movie, uh, The Internship. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was one that I thought really, really was uh, one that I watched over and over. The other one was The Predator. Um, and in 1987, I believe that launched uh, with Schwarzenegger. Um, Carl Weathers, uh, Jesse the Body Venture. Which you made you made a point on this. Uh, I remember earlier when we were filming. Uh, it's the only movie in history that's got two governors in it. Yep. 
And uh, which I thought was an interesting point. Yeah, I think well, it was. Was, was it you? Was yeah. you? I knew one of you guys did. That movie, um, and if you go back and look at the budget of the movie, it was crap. I mean, they didn't even they didn't put any kind of money into it, but it exploded. Little fun fact: the original Predator, the person that was supposed to be in the original Jean Claude Van Damme costume was Jean Claude Van Damme, and he got cut out of the movie because he's too small. Because they redesigned the whole Predator look. Wouldn't uh, Kevin Nash? Was it Kevin Nash? I'm not sure who no. the actual Predator was, but I know originally it was no, Kevin Nash was Shredder. He yeah, was Super yeah. Shredder. But it was Jean Claude Van Damme was the original Predator. And I then they also, cut him out and put a different predator in. Yeah, you needed somebody with some more bulk to pull it off because he was just thrashing Schwarzenegger around. Which is a fantastic movie, man. Like the, the, the whole thing beside it. I mean, it was over the top. It was kind of Michael Bayish. Um, Get to the chop up. Yeah, it's got some <laughs> <laughs> memorable quotes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, all get quotes. to the chop up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be an Arnold That That one was. Uh, I still to this day, uh, it's the only movie my wife, it's the only movie of all the movies we have, and Lily can be a testament to this, that my wife actually gets pissed off <laughs> that I've watched it so much. She's like, will you please turn that off, man? Please turn that movie off. It actually makes her physically mad. <laughs> She's seen it so many times because I still watch it over and over. My last movie, I'm, I'm going to throw this and we're pitching it over to Peeves, is the classic of all classics, Ghostbusters. The, the original. Remake. Uh, no, 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 no. Lily likes the remake Ghostbusters, don't you? She loves that one. Um, and I love I Feel Pretty. That's a good one, yeah. You, you like anything Amy Schumer, don't you? Yeah. She's your buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, so the original Ghostbusters, you can't begin to say enough good things about it. It was a trend-setting movie. It was uh, an instant classic. Um, and just the thought of, you know, Dan Aykroyd, uh, he was phenomenal. Bill Murray, phenomenal. The, I mean, the whole cast absolutely murdered it throughout. It was written well. Um, it has no, I mean, Sigourney Weaver played a great, Rick Moranis, uh, just fantastic across the board. Rest in peace, Harold Ramis. Like, the, yes. the movie came from his mind yes. and it just... It, it, it exploded and I remember they even spun off a cartoon action figures um i think there was like three different cartoons with three different teams including yeah. their team was one of the cartoons and even like the testament of what you said even a few years ago they you know they reboot um well, again, the well, again, um actually like at the time we got a video game when it came out of course because the nes had to release a game anytime anything came out but then yeah. we got an actual like good like 360 version of it where you know you actually had to guide the ghosts into the yeah into the in, into the uh, c catcher like it's, it's, it's a culture. It is a cultural phenomenon, Ghostbusters. It is. Um, which I thought, even though the movie didn't do what they thought it probably would, I thought it was kind of cool that, that they actually made cameos in, in, oh, yeah. in the newer one, you know. Um, and they made little nods to actual their characters yeah. is what's funny. Little yeah. nods to the original Ghostbusters when they had their cameos. Yeah, I thought I thought that was kind of genius, the other. But with that being said, we're gonna kick it to Pigs. Lily got anything to say about those three? Um well, like, well, I have another movie I like. I like. Um, <laughs> I love it. Buddy the Elf. Yes, Elf. <laughs> Fantastic movie. <laughs> Probably one of my top three Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Got her being one. number one, obviously. There. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. Christmas Vacation. Uh, yeah. Christmas Vacation. That is my number that one. Is <laughs> yeah. yeah that's Uncle cool. Eddie. He's, he's <laughs> awesome, ain't he? But, um,. What makes this unique is I grew up in the 90s, they grew up in the 80s, uh, so we have kind of a different perspective on, you know, movies that molded our, you know, childhood. This childhood movies are our teenage movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she mentioned a bunch of movies that were actually in my childhood times, um, but one of the movies that sticks out to me that absolutely loved and really started me, like, down, you know, like, to appreciate cinematography as much as I do is Jurassic Park. Um, God, that movie still holds up today. Like it still looks beautiful today. And it was ninety three. Ninety three. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven Spielberg probably still one of the best directors there is. No, no real CGI, mostly animatronics. Yeah. Um, great cast. I mean Samuel Jackson, uh, Sam Neill. Laura Dern. Um, Laura Dern. Um, I forgot Dr. Ian Malcolm's name. Oh, what? <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Oh, my God. <laughs> I 
I feel embarrassed now, guys. <laughs> but one of the most iconic characters ever. I mean, it that to me that movie it didn't only just invoke my love of cinema, it invoke like this love of dinosaurs. Like I would be one of the first people buying a ticket if like a real life Jurassic Park opened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't care if it malfunctioned. I would be <laughs> You kinda of be thinking hoping it. Yeah. It's still kind of carnage we can do. <laughs> like I'm just gonna hang back in the hotel for the first yeah. few days and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> but um that movie it to me I would say it had the most influence on me liking like going down the road of liking cinema. Um, movie that I thoroughly enjoyed as a child, watched it every chance I get, and they actually just made a sequel to it, and it's, the sequel's good, surprisingly. Uh, Jumanji. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You like both of those, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you like uh, both of them. I when I, mm -hmm. you like both of them. When I first heard the sequel was coming out, I was kind of skeptical. Uh, then I realized The Rock was in it, and it, the Rock can do no wrong, <laughs> even, <laughs> yeah, even though Kevin Hart was in it, and I'm uh, not a big Kevin Hart fan. Uh, uh, Jack Black murdered his role. Yeah, Jack Black. Carrie <laughs> Gillen was awesome. Yeah, God. It turned out to be a very great movie, but Jumanji, <sighs> compared to what kids get nowadays, it's it was dark for a kid's movie. Oh, yeah. Um, no doubt. It yeah. had tons of jump scares yeah. and actual dark moments. The the story of why Alan, yeah, the rumor of why Alan went missing was mm -hmm. really dark for little kids at the time. Yeah, uh, I mean Alan the whole time is dealing pretty much with PTSD. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's very psychological when you go back and look at it as an adult. Um, but you know, looking at it as a kid, it's a board game come to life. I mean, what else can you ask for yeah. as a kid? It's we all have been there. We've all loved board games. I don't care if it's anything from shoots and ladders to how much people have rage playing Monopoly and flip tables <laughs> and, and started actual fist fights over Monopoly. I mean, you like them, don't you? Candyland. Candyland. <clears throat> I remember Candyland. Uh, uh, but just imagine it coming to life and getting to see it. And that'd be awesome. Uh, late great Robin Williams, classic role that he's in. Probably one of the best comedic actors ever. Um, and the last one that I chose, um, actually just brain farted on me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm drinking water. I mean, <laughs> I feel embarrassed. I don't know. Come on, dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. Yeah. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> I don't know if that line's copyrighted. <laughs> I mean, Trump did cop try to copyright your fired, so. <laughs> um, I know one you talked to me about. Was it Independence Day? Oh, yeah, Independence there Day. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. It's been a long day. I know, yeah, we actually did. Right? When I actually went brainstorming, we went through a lot of movies. Yeah, so we, did. Um, we did. But yes, Independence Day. And why it sticks out to me so much as a child, and I go back and I look at it now, but it was the first movie that scared me as a child. I go back and look at that movie now, and I'm like, how in the world did that movie scare me? But it was the <laughs> one scene where um, he's got, the alien's got data, and he's, you know, talking through them. That, yeah. that just yeah. freaked me out. Out the window? Yeah, that it's freaked me out. Yeah, yeah, it freaked me out as a kid so bad. Um, you seen that movie, haven't you? Yep. Uh, other than that, I mean, as a kid, I loved it. Action, action, action. <laughs> Probably the greatest speech of all time in any movie. <laughs> I mean, you can't get a more rousing speech than what the president gives. Oh, uh, I thought he was talking about yeah. the one that uh, Dennis Quaid said. The one he was saying on the way back in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I'm not about the, today, yeah. 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 that was awesome. He goes ham on that speech. Man. Will Smith murdered that role. Yeah. I thought he did a fantastic job. Once again, somehow I picked another Jeff Goldblum movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, he played that part perfectly. I mean, I think he was just... I think he plays Jeff Goldblum in every part. It's just, he's he's yeah, Jeff Goldblum no matter what he plays. But, yeah, it's uh, just true. Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, Dennis Quaid. Um, who played Bill, the president? Bill, Bill, Bill Paxton. Pullman. Pullman? Yeah. Is he the one that's still alive or is Paxton still alive? Pullman's still alive. I'm waiting to hear the director of this movie. 
Actually, I don't know who directed it. Um, um, it wasn't who, you, who you're thinking. It's not Michael Bay. Are you sure? I don't know. Are we going? <laughs> are we going? I thought it was Brockheimer. Actually, I actually, I actually think it's Michael Bay. I thought it was Jerry Brockheimer. I could be wrong, but I thought it was Michael Bay. We got we got the fact checkers. Yeah, I'm getting a fact checker. But fact check. If it is Michael Bay, it's tattooed time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting. I made tattooed time anyways, boys. I made explosions, explosions, explosions. It does have Michael Bay written all over it. Comedic one, like comedic one-liners, <laughs> yeah. non-stop throughout the movie. And doesn't have the product placement though for Michael Bay. No. Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was worried about that. Yeah. But it might have been the prerequisite for what he thought when before he got in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he saw that movie. He's like, I want to do that. Illusion, <laughs> but it needs more product placement. More world blow it up ish. <laughs> more Pepsi. <laughs> more Pepsi. <laughs> no, um, not Pepsi, don't you? Oh yeah. Oh, those are the movies that stick out to me. Um, Jurassic Park started my love of cinema. Um, Jumanji, just fun movie that I can watch over and over again. Watched it over and over again as a child. And Independence Day, because it's the first time I remember being scared in a movie. And now I absolutely love horror movies and don't get scared. No, and we do <coughs> solid movies. Yeah, with that, Brad. Brad? Mine. Me and Bo's went back and forth because we did grow up in the same time yeah. and we had a lot of the same tastes. So we've kind of figured out what we're going to do. And I said I was going to go on the fly, but these three movies keep coming back in my head. Anybody that knows me knows I love Warcraft. I love Lord of the Rings. I love Dungeons and Dragons, fantasy stuff like that. The first fantasy movie I can honestly remember was the one movie that George Lucas is usually forgotten about is Willow. Nah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Warwick Davis, yeah. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer in probably one of his greatest roles. Yeah. Um, I saw it when I was a kid and it was one I watched all the time because there wasn't a lot of fantasy around back then. At least not big budget that people would have known about. It was all low budget like Beastmaster movies like that. Yeah. And my parents took me to the cinema and I was already freaked out because you had like eight different sizes of people. It wasn't just like little people and humans. Oh, yeah. You also had the little... Um, God, I can't remember what they were called. Brownies. Brownies. Yeah, the <laughs> two little guys that were the little comic relief to the whole movie. Yeah. It's a, one of the first movies that I remember seeing a, and like a terrifying female villain in with the queen in it and everything. Mm -hmm. um, Warwick Davis, as I said, for character actors, he's one of my favorite character actors. I mean, he was Wicked, he was Leprechaun, he was all these iconic <laughs> Leprechaun. Those short people, little people roles. I'm going to Yellow Wolf uh, had a, remember that? He's got a line of, got guns the size of the midget we <laughs> um, My number two, my love of sci-fi. This movie is my love of sci-fi and my love of horror all in one. It's Terminator. Mm. It's the first movie, I would say that I can remember even before Back to the Future that dealt with the idea of time travel that I can remember. I think it came out maybe like three years before Back to the Future or something like that. Wasn't it, wasn't it uh, 84 or 83? 84, somewhere right in there. It was, yeah, I know it was before. And I Back and all I know is Conan. As I was a little kid, it was Conan. <laughs> was going back in yeah. time, and he was a robot. He was a beast. He suddenly wasn't Conan. He was a robot that, you know, and then you have people going back through time, and the action in that movie... The special effects in that movie for 1983-84, like when he, especially when he teleports into that alley and just the electricity coming yeah. off, it looks better than most big budget movies that were coming out at that time. Yeah, James Cameron, I mean, he still has it. Obviously, Avatar in terms of visual effects, but even then, he was ahead of his game. Because look yeah, at what, yeah, how yeah. he stepped it up eight years later with Terminator Two. And, and end up winning an Oscar for Terminator Oh, Terminator yeah, because I told y'all on a previous filming, that was one of the movies that was a trend-setting visual effects movie. Mm -hmm. That's the only non-Star Wars movie that comes to mind that really was light years ahead of itself at that time, in my opinion. Which was, uh, 92? 91? Not, I want to say 92. It was somewhere in there. Oh, it was way ahead of itself. Because I also made the comic, the comic that it also was used to help sell... Like the Guns N' Roses album at the same time, because they really ate up the fact that... Was it Use Your Illusions then? Yeah, because it had um, You Could Be Mine on it. Yeah. And the video was even actually filmed with Robert Patrick and Arm Swiss. And all them came yeah. into the video for it. Yep, I remember that. And lastly, another horror movie 
but was actually marketed as a family movie and a movie for kids. And it is the first movie to truly terrify me <laughs> as a child was Poltergeist. Oh, yeah. And I, before they had PG-13, they only had PG and R, they felt the movie was, wasn't bad enough for R, R, even though when it come out you had little kids actually having nightmares over that movie. Yeah. And it was bad, but there was still an element of fantasy. And I remember I went looking at Scrambled TV for a long time after <laughs> I seen that, bro. I had to remove, my grandmother had in her living room had to remove a clown doll out of her living room because of me in that movie. Oh, but it, it's Toby Hooper is the guy who created Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It come from the mind of Steven Spielberg. Yet another Spielberg creation is on somebody's list here. He's a beast, bro. The special, that's another one with special effects in it. The cinematography in it, especially when the house starts imploding yeah. and things like that. Well, um, it's done. It, there's so many things in, that go on in that movie at once. And it's just, it's mind blowing, but it, it still had that, that family movie feel to Everybody still made it out okay. It was still, you knew it was going to be a happy, you knew it was happy at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think it, it would, I mean, I remember when I used to see Scramble TVs, and I was like, nope, I'm out. That, there is no, there is not a single, there is no way if that movie came out today, it would get the PG rating that no. it did back then. Lord, uh, it'd probably be an NC-17 or something like that. <laughs> um, as you can see, man, we all got definitely different movies. Um, uh, even starting with Young Lily, you said you had another one you want to mention? Uh, Star Wars. Yes. Which one? Uh, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> <laughs> you like all of them, don't you? Yeah. Um, Lily, yeah, anything else you want to say to everybody? Mm. You want to tell Mommy, hey? No. No? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lily, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, guys, uh, as y'all can see, many different great movies I think we covered today. We covered anywhere from comedy to horror to sci-fi. Um, definitely a lot of movies we talked about that still hold value to the day. You know what I mean? They haven't lost value. Still movies that if you're watching your TV at home, many of you out there would stop on a lot of these movies. Um, <clears throat> kind of unique. Lily Ryan come on with us today. I think that's pretty awesome. I think she stole some of Pete's movies from yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> she dipped into the 90s and yeah. <laughs> Debo'd a few movies away from Pete's. I got Big Boyd. <laughs> With that being said, guys, we're going to close out. Please uh, hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell. Get the notifications when all the new movies come out. Um, you guys have a good night.